Hi, it's Chester from Blue Pecan Computer Training. Uh, in this video, we're going to sum between two dates. So I've got quite a large list here of transactions, 2018 down to 2020, it's about 18,000 records. And we want to be able to, to sum the revenue based on a start date and an end date. Now, the first thing I would do if I was faced with this problem is convert my data into an Excel table. Two reasons for that mainly. One is that I think it's easier to refer to columns when they're in a table. And secondly, it creates a dynamic range. So if you add more data, your formulas are going to automatically pick up that new data. So why wouldn't you? So anyway, to convert to a table, click anywhere in it, just one cell, insert tab on your ribbon, table, or control T. Click on OK. It does this funny uh, formatting every other row, so you can see it's a table. And I would give the table a name. So you get an extra tab on your ribbon, table design, table name box over on the left. We'll call this revenue report. It's not really a report, actually. Let's call it revenue data. I'm creating a report. It's the raw data itself. Okay, so I've got my two dates here. 1st of June to 31st of December 2019. And we're going to use a function called sumifs. There is a sumif function. And that's great if you've just got one criteria. Well, we've actually got two criteria. Even though it's on date, we've got a start date and an end date. So that constitutes two criteria. We're basically going to say the date needs to be greater than or equal to the start date or less than or equal to the end date. Two criteria on the same field, the same column. So equal sum ifs. So the first argument is sum range. So that is the field that we're going to add up values in. And in our scenario, that's the revenue revenue field. Now, what I can do is if I just start typing into uh, the formula, it's going to bring up the name I gave to uh, this table. I've also got revenue as a table. Don't get confused by that. I just use that on the other sheet. So revenue data is the name of this table. And in fact, once I've double clicked on it, you can see that it's selected it. Now, I'm not adding up the whole of the revenue data, only the actual revenue column. So if I open a square bracket, now you'll find that, well, on a UK English keyboard anyway, to the right of the P key, um, I want to add up revenue. So I double click on revenue there and then just close the square bracket. So that's the sum range, that's the column I'm adding up, and we can see it's selected there, comma. Now, the next argument you can see here is criteria range one. Now, if the argument has got the word range in it, that means column. It could mean row, but it means column in this context anyway, criteria range one. So, we are applying criteria to the date column. So I'm going to type in revenue data again. Open the square bracket and date. Close square bracket. Okay, so that is the criteria range one. That's the column I'm applying the first criteria to, comma. The next argument is criteria one. So what criteria am I applying to the first criteria column? Well, it's got to be greater than or equal to the start date. Okay, so you think you did this, greater than or equal to the start date. Now, I could just close the bracket there and press enter, and it isn't going to work. Now, what you actually have to do is put this 
comparison operator greater than or equal to in quotation marks and then you've got to join it or concatenate it to the cell address and to do that you just use the ampersand symbol if I press enter now so that figure at least it's given me a result this time but that figure isn't the result I want because all it's done is pick up any revenue after this date so I have a second like condition for adding stuff up so comma again and then I'm on to this non-mandatory first non-mandatory argument criteria range two how do I know it's non-mandatory because it's got the square brackets around it so criteria range two well what's the column I'm applying the second criteria to it's the same as the first criteria is revenue data date column so I type it in again date and so that's the criteria range two comma and the criteria for that is going to be less than or equal to ampersand the end date okay so press enter and now I've got my revenue figure now if we're a teeny weeny bit skeptical as to whether that's worked or not, you can always check out whether that's the correct answer. In a table, if we go back into my table and then back to the table design tab, there's this total row option which I'm going to tick. And that is going to total the revenue for any filter that I apply to my table. So let's try applying that filter, date filters between so 01, 06, 2019, 31st of the 12th, 2019. Click on OK. Go to the bottom, 342928, which is the answer we had. Let me take the filter off so we can see that. 342928, exactly the same answer. So it has worked. Okay, let's look at some other examples. Say you just wanted to add up the revenue for a particular month. So let's say 0106 2019 again. Now, obviously, you could just type in 30th of the 6th, 2019. It's probably worth mentioning the end of month function. So I've got my start date there. And then I can just say, with the months argument, say I wanted my end date to be the end of the next month, so the end of July, I'll put a one in. That's the serial number for the date, let's format it. So I'll get the 31st of July. If I wanted the end of the current month, put a zero. What if I wanted the end of the previous month, guessed at minus one so that's the day before the first of the sixth no, i don't want any of those things that's just out of interest let's put a zero in so now because i've got this all sorted here i can just drag it down and it'll do the calculation between these two dates the thing about the table is is i don't have to use any dollars or anything to fix these range arguments some range, criteria range one or criteria range two, no dollars needed, which I need to use if I kind of manually selected those columns. And just drag the formula down. Okay, so what about if I want to have a date range between two dates, several months apart, but starting from, say, the middle of the month? So if I said the 15th of the 6th, 2019 and then I'm going to use a function called edate so here's my start date and I'm going to say six months six months worth of revenue from the 15th of the 6th annoyingly it doesn't format it as a date but there we are 15th of the 12th and I could just copy that down and it would give me the answer for that so the principle is the same really <laughs> whatever method you're using for typing in or calculating a start and end date the principle is the same with some ifs but 
So there we are, there's some useful functions that you might use in this context, end of month and e-date. Okay, that's all I wanted to show in this video. Hopefully you found it useful. If you have, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next video.